Yeah, so just start to record now. We'll have a little, quick look at what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is the, the strength cycle, yeah? Mainly for the, um, well, what we're doing in the Legion, it'd be front squats on a Monday and deadlifts on a Friday. Okay. Um, it's got three waves, yeah? Obviously, the first wave is going to get us back in, get us moving a while. Some of those, it's got a, the problem is it's got a cater for both because we've had people training and we have people doing nothing. Okay, so we try is trying to get that blend. I think this this is a sort of, in my head, I won't know until I really try it out through the three waves. That is something mm. that you could repeat again. So you can once you get to the third wave, you can come back to this first wave again. Um Working off a 90% trainer max, and I think some of the members who haven't done anything should probably even consider lesser than that. Okay, because obviously their, their true 1RM won't be true anymore because they haven't done anything for six, seven, however month, months it's been. Okay, excuse me. Um, but the other thing is obviously, obviously, you know, yeah, having a great, a, bit more of a gradual build up because of the effects of what we, we talked about before, which is the DOMS. Okay. So I, I would even like maybe even some people that have literally done nothing, maybe instead of five sets of three here, you see, maybe even just they do the three sets of three, the yeah. first week, the first week yeah, back, yeah. and then maybe four sets of three the following week back. It's not so much, at that time, we said before, it's not the actual time when you're lifting it, you feel, oh, this is all right. It's what it's going to be like on Tuesday or when, more so Wednesday. Um, if they can't get out of bed or they can't walk downstairs, then, or well, you're going to get a little bit of that anyway. But I mean, if it's, if you haven't done anything for months and months, it's, it gets quite, the DOMS can be quite painful. So, and that also puts you off training as well. If you have that, you're like, oh, I'm not doing that again. Yeah, you want to. You then have three days off, which is not really where you want to be. Is three it? days of doing nothing. Yeah, yeah, mm. and then you'll sort of get start getting into like a vicious circle, don't you? I so, guess um, another thing that I don't know what your thoughts are, but with the with the week one and two, mm -hmm. um, there's also the opportunity to say, well, look, you know, you don't need to climb to eighty percent. You don't need to climb to ninety percent. There is an yeah. you know, there's something there that says if you need to do two sets at sixty. Uh, 60 percent and then maybe two sets at 65 and then if you feel good your final set at 70 percent perfect uh, yeah that might be a might be another option for people yeah. as well so they still get the volume in but maybe the load just sort of yeah sets back a little bit yeah yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. um and i would even probably like i would say if they haven't done anything before i'm not going at that 80 percent even if it is being a quite a a a, a, a their training max is quite off their while while RM, maybe it's 80% of the training max. Yeah. I'd even yeah. consider not going at that. Yeah. Uh, but like you say, some people would be very it'd be so varied the first cycle. Okay. So I want it to be, but I also want it to be quite benefit for the people that have trained. Okay, because yeah. they put you know they've they've been working quite hard. So why do I want it to be too easy for them? So let me let me just talk you through my first process my thought process here. So we've got the first wave, which is three reps. So we've got five sets of three reps on, on week one. Um, and that's going every 90 seconds. Okay, so it takes about 20 seconds to do those reps, maybe 30 if they go nice and slow, they get a minute's rest. All right, it's, it's quite quick going. There's not a lot of rest there. And, um, and that again might be worth for those people that have I haven't trained, should we say, to stay at a same percentage throughout that. Yeah. So they're not like hanging out. Do you know what I mean? Um, it goes quite quick. So you do five, you're going to do five sets of three reps and you get about a three minute rest. Um, they're going to drop the weight down to fit. So it's got, so the percentage is going from 60, 65, 70, 75, 80. Three minute rest and then they do a drop set. So an AMRAP, so as many reps as possible at 50%. So that's a deadlift or front squat, um, depending on what day it is. But I don't want them to go over 10 reps, even if they've been training. 
And the idea of this, this, this set here is really, they've gone up to 80%, they've pushed away, you know, have really worked hard. Tend to, if we've got some imbalances that, you know, one leg would be working a little bit harder than the other. Mm -hmm. So form goes just a bit. The same with when we get to the 90%. So really come down to the drop set. What you do is drop nice 50%. And they're just going to drill the movement again. So the idea yeah. is to finish on a good note. Okay, yeah. so it wasn't finishing off with that last rep, just squeezing through, um, pushing with the other leg, you know. So this time they drop back down, drill the movement nice and steady. And like I say, no more than 10 reps, because I think if we go any more than 10 reps, then even the guys that have been <coughs> are going to wake up feeling a little bit sore from that one. Yeah, there's a lot of volume in there, isn't there? So it's just it's a lot of volume. Uh, you know, we've got 10 it. reps there. And we've got 15 in the strength. So we've got 25 reps, which is sort of where we want to be looking for our, our strength yeah. okay, our strength um, cycles anyway. So that's week one. Week two, not a lot of changes. We get more rest and we're going to go up uh, another 10% here. So we start at 70% um, and work our way up to 90. So 70, 75, 80, 85, 90. So I'll just finish this this one this is quite a heavy week but i've been following the 531 so my 1rm my um 90 training max is probably on on my train on my sort of where my strength is at the moment if you know what yeah. i mean yeah, rather yeah. than being 10 percent lighter because i've moved i've pretty much did the 531 for three months and my strength's gone up i've added on each week each month yeah so mine's gone up. So these guys hopefully should be, it shouldn't be, um, I mean, I've got the reps in, no problem. Got the reps in, but I, I, I was working, you know, I found yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're going over two minutes. So there's a lot more rest, a lot more time to change the plates around as well. Yeah, bit, it, feels, time. yeah. it feels a little bit better. Um, I might even change this actually for this first cycle to two minutes. Um, okay. Just because it gives you a bit more time to move through it. Um, yeah, I, I think when they come, if they come, if we come around and repeat it again, keep it in 90 seconds because it worked fine for me. But if you've not been doing it for a while, 90 seconds might be a bit too quick, especially with with front squat as well. Is there's a little bit of setup time that takes place once you've sort of picked the bar up, get set. There's yeah. probably a, you know a few more, let's say another 10 20 seconds maybe that on top of potentially yeah, yeah. a back squat. So, yeah. Uh, why I'm here, what, what I forgot to say is with these reps, so front squat's not a problem. We're just making sure we get a good form through. Um, deadlifts, what we're going to do is they're basically going to be three singles. So no touch and go on the the uh, okay. on the working sets. On the AMRAP, they can touch and go. Okay. So we can drill a good posture. But what I want them to really drill here is that start position on the deadlift. The okay. uh, percentage is the same. Percentage is the same. Yeah, cool. Yeah, percentage is the same as a, this is the front and back. Uh, sorry, front and deadlifts. Yeah, perfect. Um, but just uh, really focusing on like locking those armpits down, really going through the basic movement for each rep rather than just getting that first one out and then being able to touch and go. What we yeah. find is a lot of people struggle with that first rep. And yeah. Once absolutely. they're under tension, they can drive through it, um, which is okay, but if we can work on that weakness, especially for the first first wave, we get a lot more from it. Um, and the eighty percent also no bout for front squat or deadlift. Okay, when we get up to the ninety percent, they can put a bout on for the ninety percent, but not during the eighties. Okay. Uh, again, that is one. It might stop people going too heavy. Yeah. And the other, one, it's that we want to be building the core strength up, and if they're relying on the bout like all the time. I've seen people put bouts on for warm up sets. Really, really, you know, the bout is the luxury. It should be something we put on on the final, um, final weights. Really, the seven. Uh, sorry, ninety percent onwards. Yeah. So going back to week two, every two minutes, and we're going 70, 75, 80, 85, 90. Drop sets at sixty percent this time. So same rest, drop set, six sixty percent again. Drilling good movement for that for that. Okay. Yeah. Third week is our heavy week. We got three reps of three rep. Uh, sorry, three sets of three reps. And um, going every two and a half minutes. All right. 
and that's 80, 85 and 90%. Then they're going to get a two and a half minute rest on top of that uh, and then do an AMRAP at 95%. Uh, and we're really all we're looking for is like not obviously 10s and 12 reps. It shouldn't be that high. But we're looking for something that's just over three reps, maybe. Maybe maybe, you know, maybe it's not. Maybe it's, they've gone too heavy with the training max. And they're only getting one or two reps out. Yeah. But the key thing is to stay one to two reps shy of failure. So we don't want them pushing it too much. They've always got some left in the bank. Um, but yeah, again, if they get over three percent, uh, three reps, I'll, I'll mention that in a minute. But that's that's the aim, sort of trying to get over three reps if we can, uh, and have another three minute rest, and then they got a, set, uh, a drop rep, a drop set at seventy percent. Okay, again, just to finish on a good note, um, we've we've lifted heavy more than likely. We've had some just a not perfect form towards the end, still safe but not perfect. Um, but then we can get use that arm wrap. It's going to be heavy but we can get a good few reps out. Again, five to 10 reps max on that one. Okay, yeah. Okay, got a deload week. Um, so deload week is just gonna be 10 sets of one rep. Uh, that's an EMON for 10 minutes, one on the minute. Okay, and we'll, we're giving them a sort of an option here by anywhere between 40 and 60%. They can move up through that if they want or stay at that way, whatever they want, but not to go over 60%. And it's just yeah. really, it's just again, just greasing the groove, but not putting too much. They're only putting total reps in as 10 reps where they're compared to the weeks before was 25. Um, I think that would be, um, that would be very much needed as well after the weeks two and three. Yeah. Um, yeah. And especially like with the guys you know, who haven't done anything, but it's probably yeah. a good, good time. Just and, and Dilo, we, we've said this before, they're so important um, yeah. that we do back off the weight. Um, again, if they do, like say, going off week three, depending on what they got at 90%, they can then, so even if that first wave was really easy for them, okay, they get three plus reps at 90, 95%, they can adjust that trainer max then. So adjusting the trainer max, you've, got, if it, um, you've gone over 95% by three reps, or, or well, sorry, three plus, yeah. lower, lower bodies, Five, five kilos, upper body 2.5. Um, because I am going to put a, a, a pressing program out as well. So if they do go, if they're doing the upper body stuff, it's only going up 2.5. Um, if they're hitting, if they've like, you know, gone stupidly heavy, uh, sorry, light for mm -hmm. their training max for the first week, first cycle, should we say, first wave, um, and they're hitting 10 plus reps, which they shouldn't be, I've put there. But if they have gone light because they haven't done anything for a long time and it was easy, then I'll give them a bit more leeway to go up a little bit heavier. Um, 10, 10 for lower body, five. For yeah, no, that body. makes sense. Yeah. If that's a, yeah. On the second way, we're going to drop the reps um, to two. So five sets of two reps. And, and when we're starting a little bit heavier, 65 rather than 60, and we're finishing our 85%. And that's with their adjusted training max as well. And the same with the, um, the AMRAP, that's a, so just, we're just 5% more than we were doing, okay, for most things. Um, this time I said that they can go um, 15 to 20 reps. Okay. At 15, yeah, if they feel okay. Yeah. You know, obviously don't, we want, the idea is this is to be perfect reps. So if, if yeah. it's not a 20 RM, where you just grind through it and try to get the no, no, no. This is drilling movement, okay? And you're still hitting that sort of 25, 30 reps then as well, aren't you? Per, that, per the day. That's my thought process. There's so mm -hmm. much evidence-based um, data behind hitting that that sweet spot, which is like 20 to 30 reps. Yeah. Um, so that's what I'm trying to get that in there as well. But obviously, we've got to remember that we've got the conditioning afterwards, but that will be at a lot of lighter weight, um, and it's not always going to be relevant to what we. So, as far as the conditioning, normally what we what I do and then what I have done is program sort of accessory movements for the deadlift and front squat. Yeah, in the, in the cardio metcon bit. Okay, so that's the first week, ninety seconds. 
we'll keep that 90 seconds this time round because I think um, yeah. it's two and that everyone will be fly, flying by then. Yeah, yeah. Then we've got five, second week two, five sets of two. Um, and then obviously we're pushing up to 92% rather than 90%. Uh, yep. Yeah. Drop set at 65. Again, try to push a little bit further than you did on that first wave. Yeah. Okay. And then the third one. So again, it's sort of like working around those percentages, 85, like 85, 90, 90, 92%. And then again, not like that AMRAP at 95%, looking to try to get two plus. But if you want to adjust your training max, you have to get three plus. Okay, but making sure that you're not just doing it to be a hero, you've still got another rep in there. So if you get four reps, you know, you can ch adjust it. Uh, but don't, even if people are only hitting three reps on this, right, and they feel like, oh, I won't be able to adjust my training max now, that's not something to be worried about. Because even if you repeated this cycle, you know, um, you've got an like, AMRAP you can push a little bit more on. Yeah. Uh, and you'll come back round and you'll be able to adjust it. You're pretty sure if you repeated that cycle again, um, you know, well, even going into the next one, even if you stayed at the same way, it's going to be challenging enough. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So you don't repeat this cycle. You What you do is obviously you finish this one. Again, deload week, 10 sets of one every minute. One on the minute, every minute for 10 minutes. Again, 60, 70%. Nothing changes that one. That stays the same. If they didn't hit anything, it doesn't matter. That means that they're not quite ready to go up and wait, but they're going to go on to um, a different set. So if you look at this third wave, they've got five sets of three reps on this one, only going to 85%. Yeah. Week two is five sets of two. So this is going up to 92%. And then they're doing four sets of four okay. reps. Yeah, uh, cool. One rep, sorry. Uh, a heavy load. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and then that drops at 80% rather than... Um, 70, 75. Yeah. 70, yeah. Again, one to two reps shy. And like I say, this, I, I think even if they didn't adjust their max, they're still going to get like by staying at the same weight because it goes up heavier anyway. Yeah. You're going to get something from it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. It's you you like could it. probably do that. You could probably do that with the original training max, couldn't you? Go through that whole wave. That's so all three waves. You could. Yeah, you could not even adjust it. You could go Just through the whole three that. waves, which is what, 12, 12 weeks, without adjusting your training max because the yeah. percentages go up anyway. The reps go down. So... You know, you've got that chance you can go heavier because the reps have gone low. Yeah, yeah down yeah. anyway. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, that's that's basically it, really. Nice, cool. Yeah, that's so, good. That, that, now that that's makes a lot of sense. Yeah, obviously, I already tested two weeks of it so far, um, yeah. and it's going all right. We go to week three next week, so I'll test that. But then the guys are starting it, so yeah. And I've got an online client who's trying it out at the moment, and they're on the same week as me. They started cool. the same week, and they've been fine. Um, so yeah, so then the guys are testing it. If it doesn't work the first wave, then we'll knock it off. But this, I, I think this, in theory, look at the numbers. Look at the, the numbers that we're trying to trying to achieve. That sweet spot, that twenty to thirty reps, the percentages, the gradual build up. You know, there's no reason why it shouldn't be quite effective i think also the effectiveness will come off off of the back of the the fact that we've been even if you've been training all the way through lockdown even if you've been very consistent we've not been training front squat yes we've been training deadlift but yeah yeah um the front squat i think people will notice some real significant um gains over the first couple of weeks just because of the fact that the front squat is you know it's something that we've not done for a long time yeah um, unless you've been doing you know unless you've been religious around the olympic lifting front squats even then the the, the volume hasn't been high so no and um, i was sat down and talked to james about this the other day and we we're both on the agreement like 
you, if you improve your front squat, it will improve your back squat. Yeah. No, no, no doubt about it, it will. But it doesn't work the other way around. No. Um, obviously, the angle. But if you can improve, and a lot of other vari vari variables. Yeah. But yeah. with the front squat, it starts to teach you to be more upright. Yeah, yeah. More absolutely. upright you can be, even in the back squat. If you start upright in that back squat, then the bones are stacked. You start moving better. Um, so that's that's the theory we're trying to work that front squat for the next 12 weeks. Uh, yeah, really perfect. get that up. And I think this is a good way of doing it. Obviously, the time, the clock's good to get the class moving. And um, yeah, I just that I might I will change this to two minutes this first one. Okay. Uh, before I post it, I'll post it tonight. Um, but yeah, I'll change that to two minutes rather than I'll do it now. So I. Uh, and it's live. It's live. That's ten minutes. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that'd be. I think it's I think, been more than enough. Yeah, um, it's all when you're on your own, but when you're like in a class and you're trying to move those weights around, and yeah. I think the two minutes. That to be fair, when I did, it was quick. It was quick going when I did that on my own, and when yeah. I did this week, it was so much better because you could just put it on. The time to sit down, just chat, and just not chat. I don't talk to myself, honestly. Um, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. The yeah. Macarena comes on. <laughs> right, yeah. So that's 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 basically it, right? Really, that's that's cool. the that's the next. Obviously, our days are going to be set. So Monday will be leg day or squat, mainly squat focus. Yeah. Tuesday will be the strength and condition at the gymnastics conditioning. Okay, so um, what I would say to people is don't. don't if you do struggle with body weight movements, and I do understand you do, like some people, a lot of us do, um, to still come in and on these days and try to work work on them because the benefits you see from doing, I know what it's like when you come in and you're struggling to do press ups and God knows, God knows what else, or the handstand push ups or whatever. And the benefits you get from it, core strength wise, uh, and, yeah. and just overall body awareness is is worth it just on its own. You know there's I mean? so there's many. All, there's always a progression to it as well. Yeah, yeah. there's so many progressions. I was going to say there's the progressions to to pretty much ninety nine percent of gymnastic movements. Even if it's something like a, a muscle up, there's still some real yeah. big mass. Well, some real important progressions. Yeah, well, you, that you could go all the way down to ring rows. You know, yeah, yeah, that are really accessible. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think yeah, totally agree. Just come in and. Get involved, and if it, you know, if 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 you do come out of the class, you think, oh, I don't know if I've got much out of that. I think yeah. you, you 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 will as the weeks go on. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, and the thing is, the better you get at gymnastics, the, the harder it gets. If that makes sense. Yeah, it never, you, it yeah, gets, yeah, yeah. It never, never gets, gets easier. easier. I also said to some of the guys, so Wednesday be lifting day. Uh, mainly, uh, James has written a program for that, and it looks pretty good. Cool. Uh, it's quite similar to what we were doing this in December. Yeah. Um, Thursday is the engine day. Okay, we, we all know what to expect from that. Emon, sweaty, basic movements. Okay, and then Friday we've got that functional bodybuilding. What I said to the guys this morning, a lot of people see on that functional bodybuilding, oh, there's not a lot of cardio in there. We were, this morning, we were blowing out. We were actually blowing out going through those reps. And, and a lot of people think, just because it simply doesn't say Metcon, they're not gonna like burn any calories or anything. But trust me, resistance training is proven. Yeah, it, yeah. That that you know, especially that sort of stuff as well, that high, hypertrophy stuff that we do with the, the functional bodybuilder. You're sweating, you're burning calories. So don't miss those ones as well. And also, it's a lot of unilateral work. A lot of unilateral work is going to get us balanced out and it's going to keep definitely. us in here free. Yeah, that's, yeah, no, that's definitely. a really good one. Just don't try to try not to miss that one, guys. I think and also what, after what, after the engine day it is nice to actually have a bit of a you know lesser heart rate session if you like um, yeah, yeah. where you are just taking a step back moving a little bit slower a little bit more strict um and it'll probably suit off of it definitely suits actually off the back of that you know that high heart rate let's yeah. go hard on thursday so actually yeah. let's take a step back and the, you know you're still going to move mm. um but actually you're going to move a little bit more strict and you're going to become you know you're going to use like you say the unilateral work just to yeah. slow things down a little bit. So, I've yeah. been also chatting to a few people uh, lately. I'm going to put this in because I'm going to share this video. 
Um, so a few people were obviously worried about coming back. Um, worried, one, obviously they got out of habit of it. Um, two, they're worried about the pain, obviously, doms and stuff like that. Yeah. And just worried about being consistent and getting back into it again. Um, no one's no one's mentioned the COVID at the moment, uh, but anyway, we, you know we will have those measures in place and yeah. be safe. What, I, what I've suggested to people that I've been speaking to this week and last week is to um, just obviously really step back, stay at level one, stay at level one. If you haven't done anything for months, stay at level one. Even if it feels light at that moment, we just talk about just beginning with the strength. Even if it feels light. Or even go below level one. Okay, I'm not yeah. bothered. Even if they, the most important thing is they move and get sweaty mm -hmm. and get, get used to and see everyone again. But even yeah. if they stay below, and what I've suggested, maybe maybe for the first week, just do Tuesday, which is like body weight stuff, and Thursday, which is the, the, the cardio, not do the weights the first week or anything heavy. They can still come, don't get me wrong. If they can only get in on a Monday and a Friday, come in Monday and Friday and just go really, really light. Um, it doesn't matter, like you're saying. Just first couple of weeks, let your body get used to the shock because it's going to be mm. a shock. If they come in and then they make eggs them on to do level, oh, what are you, why are you not doing level two? Oh, come on. All oh, right, then they stick a bit of weight on. Next minute, yeah, done it. Yeah, smashed it. Get out next day. Oh, I can't, yeah. it. can't reach for the cupboards. Do you know what I mean? And then they start, it makes you not want to come in then. You don't want to feel like that again. We just spoke about it earlier, but those side of things, you know. So people that have been training well and doing it, don't egg your mate on who hasn't done anything for six months to watch him suffer because that's all you're doing it for. Yeah, it's not about that, is it? Um, no, we do suffer in the gym. Yeah, and don't get me wrong. Give give it give it three or four weeks, and yeah, I'm sure those those conversations will start arising. But yeah, let's, yeah, let's not do let's it. Take, let's take two weeks of just easing everyone. I don't think I think it, regardless of whether you've been training and consistent. I think or, even if you've been training, what you've got to be careful of, you haven't been training in a group, and we know this is why we love group training, is because it pushes us further than we would train on our own. We know that for a fact. We all know, everyone that comes to the gym knows. The reason we like the classes is because we push ourselves beyond the limit that we normally push ourselves when we're training on our own or at home. Uh, and we get great benefits from that, not only just conditioning, but mentally. Because um, we're like, oh, I've done that. I've done that really well, do you know what I mean? Um, but that's because you get, you get pushed along with a class we just got to be a little bit more the first couple of weeks, maybe for even the three weeks, hold back a little bit um, and just see how our body responds to it, not go too yeah. hard too soon. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. Brilliant, Dan. Thanks for um, jumping cool. in on us with that. Like I said, no I was worries, mate. It. so we'll, we'll get the members to, um, they can watch it in their own time and have a look at you and see if they can read your board behind. I'm going to charge... Andy, advertisement fees for that. <laughs> Let's see if anyone, yeah. Andy, he'll be watching this. So you're like, hey, hey, <laughs> hey lads. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right. Yeah, cheers for that, mate. I'll let you get back to um, nice one. Back to your day, okay? Yeah, cool. No, look forward to next week. Bring it on. Yeah. Cool. All right, mate. Take care.